risk of shark bite, and it's killing marine wildlife. We're still using these outdated nets to essentially call and kill marine life. Sharks are not something to be feared. There's always going to be sharks in the ocean. It's been one of the worst ways to die. It's so torturous to imagine that, yeah, these beautiful animals had to suffer. My name is uh, Dr. Peter Skeynes, and I'm a uh, recently retired marine biologist. So shark nets are used to catch sharks. Their, their fundamental purpose is as a, what we call a mesh net or a gill net to catch sharks. They're designed to catch large animals, um, animals with a body length of more than about two meters. They're only in the water for six months of the year from October to March. And we have people in the water all year round. And shark nets themselves are only about six metres high and 150 metres long, and they're actually set at a depth of about 10 metres. Shark nets were first instituted in 1937. So it's a, a very long time ago. And even back then, shark nets were actually quite controversial. Um, so really it's much more about giving people a false sense of security rather than anything else. I don't think the shark nets actually protect the swimmers because the ocean is much higher than the shark nets so the shark can easily go over or under so then it actually doesn't block them out. They're designed specifically for one purpose and one purpose only and that is to kill whatever gets caught in these nets. This was a technology designed in the 30s, and conceived in an area where people were terrified of sharks, had no idea about their involvement or their importance of the ecosystem, and it was purely a fear-based campaign just to eradicate sharks in the ocean. So I think that the idea that they're dangerous to humans, it's absolutely true that if a shark decides to attack you, it's dangerous. But they're not, they're not that frequent, actually, but um, they do make the news. And of course, that just adds to people's fear. Um, you know, we've all seen the, the sorts of statistics about it's more dangerous to be stung by a bee. It's more dangerous to get in your car to drive to work. They're probably, they're, they're good statistics, but they're also not applicable to this. And, you know, these old films like Jaws certainly didn't help. Uh, I think that's sort of an indelible mark on a lot of people's psyches. So when they get in the water, they think of jaws even now. And, uh, so, you know, people do say that, oh my gosh, the, you know, jaws has been um, very salient. So how you negate that kind of sensationalism is also key to addressing. And I think the fear of sharks comes from the fact that it's a, something that occurs suddenly and it's very horrific, it's very dramatic, uh, and it's very visceral fear. Whereas the fear of bee stings is not quite so visceral. I think it's probably more like a respect that they deserve rather than to be feared. Um, being able to, to understand like what you can do to prevent putting yourself in dangerous situations, but also understanding that at the end of the day, you are going into their territory. So it's something that you kind of, you know, calculate your risk, whether you feel comfortable doing that. My name is Ange and I became passionate about the shark net issue because I am an ocean swimmer. So I'm in the ocean uh, every day, most mornings. And in doing so, it became obvious to me that the nets were responsible for killing innocent marine life. They're catching a lot of non-species animals and that includes sharks um, that are non-target sharks, uh, turtles, Stingrays. A month ago, we had a baby dolphin that was caught in the in the nets here just before they got out of the water. I 
I haven't seen it in person, but I was in the water just near the net the day the dolphin got entangled. The footage afterwards was quite shocking and it was really sad to know that we had been in the water the day before and a pod had swum by. You're seeing a lot of marine life getting caught up like dolphins and turtles and things like that and even like shark species that are endangered um, are kind of getting caught up in that whole thing of drowning and I think that impact is, is quite distressing. There was also a grey nurse count a while ago and in the three years from 2019 to 2022, there were 57 grey nurse sharks caught in the nets from Newcastle to Wollongong. And of those 57, at least 22 died. And grey nurses are an endangered species and they are quite gentle. I mean, sharks do all have different personalities. Sharks are an apex predator. So they're the highest level of predators in the sea. And there's been a lot of work worldwide done in a wide range of different ecosystems on apex predators. And what we understand is that having an apex predator is really critical for having the right number and types of organisms further down the food chain to have a balanced ecosystem. And in our seas, sharks play that role. If we don't have the sharks as the apex predator, then the numbers of different types of plants and animals that have existed in a balanced ecosystem for a long time start to get out of whack. So we're seeing here consistently so much, hundreds and hundreds of marine life killed again and again every season for no benefit for the public and actually the public's being left in the dark about the true impact of these programs because the government's not proud of this program. It's not a good program, it's not effective. The science around it says to stop with these nets immediately. It's a fine line of obviously wanting to keep people safe um, and so in people's minds they think that a shark net is the safest solution but in actual fact it's at the detriment of the other aquatic animals. We are now in the 21st century, right? And we have so much better technology that is available to us. And I want us to be a much more proactive council in seeking out those technological alternatives. I'm a bit of an advocate for drone usage. Um, being a swimmer myself and being in Bondi, uh, I've seen a lot of drone footage when it comes to shark mitigation, it really depends on the environment you're in because there's no one form of shark mitigation that's going to be 100% effective in every location. And honestly, no matter how many measures you put in place, you're never going to guarantee that you're never going to come across a shark. It's their natural environment. That's where they belong. Um, but in terms of what we could have and what we're pushing for, we want to see things such as improved drone surveillance at more beaches for longer periods of the year. We want to see more lifeguards on the water. We want to see more drones in the air. We want to see people wearing personal shark deterrent devices, which have been proven by science to reduce the chance of a shark interacting. You know, we want to see proper swimming enclosures introduced in areas. If people want to swim in an area that's been closed off from the beach, they can have those options. I'm also keen to see whether we can actually establish a network of of drones up and down the coast with the other professional lifeguards as a way of being able to track shark uh, movements because that's not only good for the science, I think it's also good so that we can actually determine patterns and, and have little early warning systems in place. Now drone surveillance also has this additional benefit where it can actually be used by lifeguards to detect people struggling in the water. So it has this twofold effect in terms of improving public safety by also helping to address a much greater risk in the oceans, which is drowning. So I think the more we can equip and empower lifeguards, which have done a brilliant job at reducing you know, any risk we have at our beach. We're actually training our professional lifeguards now in the use of drones. And I think we're just about ready to roll that program out. I think that it's a better solution to have eyes on swimmers in the water than to rely on a net that is potentially going to kill other animals. I think that drones are like a good step in the right direction of potential ways that you can monitor the beach um, from having that aerial perspective. I think from an from a animal survival aspect, I think that that's the better option than nets. So I'm part of a swim group called Bondi Swimblers 
and we sort of had our little offshoot group that we started called the Nets Out Now Swimming Group. And so we've been swimming to the Nets daily in a protest against them. Now, not to abrogate council's responsibility because we do have our lifeguards. Um, there is the wonderful show Bondi Rescue and of course they're always very willing to help educate. But, you know, it's also social media. It's about layering all these different alternatives and of course underscoring that is you have to have an effective community education program about how to be shark smart. You know, we learn about how to survive rips, but no one actually really learns about the things you can do to reduce your chance of being interacting with a shark. And so it's things like that as well as continuing community education, um, science programs, tagging and tracking sharks and using that information that we get to feed that back into further improving and evolving shark mitigation program. We were advocating during those swims to make sure that people were writing to their local MPs, attending uh, protests, signing petitions. There were a lot of online petitions going around at the time. Uh, so yeah, we were just sort of using our platform to raise awareness and to encourage people to do those things. This is why I'm concerned, this is why I care about this issue and why I think you need to address it. And members love to hear directly from the members of the public. I think because we're going into their territory, it's better to sort of know what you can do to mitigate the risk rather than trying to just say, well, the blanket rule is that we don't want sharks to attack us, so we're going to do something to stop them behaving naturally in their own habitat. The most empowering thing to do is to use your own voice and your own forms of expression to show that you actually care about this issue. Shark meshing is old technology. It goes back to 1937. We can do a whole lot better than that. We've got enhanced communication channels, uh, technologies evolving all the time. And our community here in Waverley is certainly very informed and they're demanding that we do much better. There's lots of evidence that shark nets are doing harm to other threatened species. And I think that's sufficient to uh, suggest that we need to look very seriously at whether or not the shark nets are the only option that we've got for keeping um, people safe from sharks. People want to be able to safely enjoy the ocean and enjoy it at its best. And at its best is when it's healthiest and flourishing and sharks are crucial towards that. I'll certainly be working hard, not only to protect our visitors, our swimmers and our surfers in the water, but what else we can do to protect our most beautiful marine environment and the animals that are in there. People either love or fear sharks, but at the end of the day, even if people fear sharks, they don't think they should be killed just for existing in their own environment. I am 100% confident that we're going to see the end of shark nets in New South Wales. It's all a matter of time and how many animals are going to be killed until it happens.